Hello and welcome to the British Basketball League and to the BBL Cup. We're here at the Plymouth Pavilions where tonight we'll see the Raiders play host to the Worcester Wolves in the second leg of the semi-final. Our teams played the first leg just last night with Plymouth romping to a 28-point victory and taking a massive step towards the NIA and a final matchup with the Newcastle Eagles. The cup competition has been running alongside the championship. Let's just remind ourselves of the results in the semi-final game so far. Newcastle are already through despite a valiant effort by Leicester. Riders came from 21 down to tie the first leg 90-90 and look to come from behind in the second leg as well. But Andy Thompson saw Newcastle home by eight points. Jeremy Bell and Lehman Colbert combined for 60 points as the Raiders bossed the first leg of this tie. Plymouth winning the middle quarters 59-30 to take a commanding 111-83 lead into tonight's game. Well, I'm joined now by Leicester and Great Britain guard Flinder Boyd. Flinder, you were here last week. This is a difficult building to win in. This is a very difficult building to win in. We actually were 0 for 16 from three-point range last week, so we know the crowd is tough, the travel is tough. Worcester, they have their work cut out for them tonight. And a phenomenal performance in the first leg by the Raiders. I mean, really, the complacency is their only worry, isn't it? Yeah, I would think so. But once again, the Wolves, they're a great three-point shooting team, actually the best in the BBL. So if anybody has a chance to overturn it, it's, it's going to be the Wolves. And if you get yourself in a big hole like this as a player, how do you attack the game in the second leg? Well, I think right from the beginning is, is the most important. The first, Really, the first two or three minutes is going to determine if they're going to have a chance in this game or not. So they're going to have to really buckle down right at the beginning of the game. And do you think it's all about the offense trying to put a big number up on the board, or is it about the defense trying to keep the other team low? Well, you have to remember there's no 10-point baskets in basketball, so they really just have to chip away one basket at a time. And, you know, it's a combination playing good defense and, and getting out and scoring easy baskets. And, of course, these two teams more than familiar with each other. They did play in the trophy where there was a 25-point lead with a quarter to go for the Wolves, so they've got that in their locker. Exactly. So that's got to give them a lot of confidence going into this game, knowing that they've done it before here. They've been in this building and they put up a big number. So there's no reason why they can't come out of this game with a, with a large victory. It's going to take a, a big ass, though, for the Worcester Wolves to overturn this first leg deficit. Here's the two coaches' thoughts on tonight's game. Is complacency the biggest worry today? I think so. I think, um, you know, we, we played a great game last night, but it truly is half time. Um, and the guys have just got to come out and play as we did yesterday with intensity and focus. Um, but I will be reminding them that it is half time and this is a spectacularly dangerous team. So uh, we'll be ready. And of course, you played them in the trophy and they had a big lead here against you. So that'll be in the back of your mind. Absolutely. There's something I'm definitely going to remind them about. We were up by 23 and they actually came down here and were beating us by 26 and we managed to to pull it out and only lose by 11 but uh, this is a tough team and they can shoot the lights out so um, you know the guys better be ready and what did you do so well in that first leg I think we played defense the last couple of weeks we definitely something we've been working on we've changed a few few sets here and there but to be honest our defense is uh, it's really coming along I'm, I'm pretty happy with us so far and 111 on the board you must have shot the ball pretty well too we did that's something in recent weeks we haven't done greatly but um, I've got great shooters on my team and uh, last night they got confident and started knocking shots down and of course, you added Jamal Williams to the lineup this week. How's he fitted in? Yeah, I mean, Jamal only just came in on Friday, so unfortunately, we hadn't had time to go through the sets or anything like that. But he's uh, he's a welcome recruit, and I'm looking forward to getting him involved very soon. Pretty confident in making the final? Um, I, I, I'm confident, but um, I'm sure the Wolves have got some tricks up their sleeves, so we'll, we'll be ready. And um, like I said, it is only half time, so I'm sure we're in for a treat today. Good luck in today's game. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Cheers. So, Paul, uh, what went wrong in the first leg? Well, they, they came into our gym, Daniel, and they shot the lights out. I mean, unbelievable shooting display from them. You know, one of those games, you know, that comes along every so often. And, uh, you know, I kept saying to myself, they can't keep this up, but they did for the whole game. You know, 52% from the three-point line, 56% overall for the game. Just unbelievable shooting from them. And it, it's a long way back, but you have led by 26 on this floor this season, so it's possible. Yeah, you know, we're going to hang on to that little uh, that little thread there. But um, no, um, it is a long way back. We're going to take each quarter at a time, and uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. Do you have to come out aggressive right from the beginning, or do you just play the game and see where you are? I think we just play the game and see where we are. You know, we're going to just uh, you know play the way we play. We did that before uh, when we came here. Managed to get a 26-point lead. Um, if we come out and shoot as well as we can do, I think you know we could probably do that again, but uh, it's a tall order. 
and defensively, is it just hoping that they don't make as many shots as yesterday or have you made adjustments? I don't think we need to make any adjustments. I think we challenged every shot as well as we could do. I mean, they made some unbelievable shots yesterday and uh, you know, I can't ask any more of the players, really. I don't know what else we can do. So uh, we're going to come out and just play the way we've been playing, keep challenging every shot, try not to give them second effort um, on any play and uh, hopefully they'll miss a few shots tonight. And nothing to lose, really. Absolutely nothing to lose. Well, Jeremy, 28-point uh, win, 33 points for yourself, an excellent night. Yeah, it was a very good win for us. Uh, we prepared well for this team, and we want to come out and play hard and, and, and try to make a statement. And you certainly did make a statement. With this massive lead, is complacency the only enemy here today? No, I don't think we're complacent. I think we're ready for this game. Uh, we know that they have nothing to lose at this point, and they're probably going to have a lot of energy um, from last night. So we're going to be prepared for that today. And are you expecting a bit of an onslaught at the beginning as they try and make early roads into the lead? Well, yeah, I'm, I, I, I expect to see you know them to throw all kind of things at us, and, and, and we just have to be ready for that and, and execute our game plan as well. And is it just about being comfortable, running your own thing, not worrying too much about the scoreboard? Yeah, we, we pretty much worry about ourselves. We know we're a very talented team, and as long as we come and execute like we can, we should come out with a victory. And you've been here for a while now. You've got to know these Plymouth fans. Great bunch of fans. They'd love to get to another cup final. Yeah, I love the atmosphere here. You know, the fans really get involved, and, and it's just a great um, thing to be a part of. Which Rod, it's a, a long way back for you here today, but you've got to believe. Definitely. I mean, we came out here and played well last time. You know, got to be, get to a big lead. So I think we could do it again. We just got to stick together as a unit. Does it help that you've had that big lead in this building against this team this season? Yeah, I definitely think that brings confidence, you know. I know we have faith in it as a team that we can stick together and we just got to keep together during the tougher times. I think that's where we fell apart last night. And that uh, first leg, really, the middle quarters killed you. What went wrong there? Um, I don't think we played hard defensively and they hit a lot of shots. So when they're making shots and you're not uh, equal in a big deficit, pretty much. Is it important for you guys to come out with a strong start, try and just get something of a lead, put some doubts in their mind? Yeah, I think the first five minutes would be crucial. You know, if we come out and play hard, set the tone, I think we'll be able to sustain that 40 minutes. And do you look at it in small chunks, try and break it down to seven a quarter, or do you just play the game and see where you are? Um, I think we're just going to play the game, you know, try not to put too much pressure on ourselves. I think we just got to go out there and play, do what we've been doing all season. And you've got to have the inner belief as a team that you can do it. Yes, 100%, and we do, so I think we'll be fine. Let's take a look at the lineups then, starting with the hometown Raiders, and they look like a strong side at the start of the season, and since then they've got even stronger with the addition of league MVP Jeremy Bell, and this week they added Jamal Williams to the lineup. Flinder, that front line of Colbert, Rowe, Williams takes some stopping. Oh, they are very, very imposing. If you look at them, just look at their biceps and triceps. They're, they're tough to stop down there, and I think they're going to cause a lot of problems for the more finesse team of the Worcester Wolves. And if we have a look at the Wolves lineup now, and uh, I guess the crumb of comfort for Worcester is that they have at least won here this season, having lost by 23 at home in the trophy. They led by 26 with just over 10 minutes to go. Flinder, they need that sort of scenario today. It can only help that they've been through it before. Well, they're a great long-range shooting team, so if anybody's going to have a chance, it's going to be them. If they put string some three balls together, you never know. You never do know. It's important for these Wolves to get off to a good start. That's going to be key. The referee has the ball. He walks into the middle. And we will get the opening tip underway here in this second leg of the semi-final of the BBL Cup. And it's Worcester who need the big victory, who get the first offense of the game. Freeman gets it out to Prezi Blue. Kozlowskis goes inside to Gordon. Back to him from Fernandez. Little soft shot inside. Rebound row. Gordon, he's got to step up this game. He's got his work cut out for him with the, the big front line, but he's going to have to make some big tough shots. Anthony Rowe from the far line. He is deadly from that 15, 16 foot top of the key range. He's improved so much with that shot over the years, and now he's a really tough player to guard. Here's Gordon for the Wolves. Coming around the screen is Prezi Blue. Out to Kozlowskis. Kozlowskis steps in. Tough shot from. Kozlowskis hits the front of the ring and the rebound pulled in by Williams. They got to take their time a little bit more here early in the game. Bell with the pull up long two doesn't quite go. Williams going after the offensive boards, but it ends up in the hands of Brezzy Blue. Is Freeman fakes at the three, drives inside behind the back pass. And open for uh, three is Fernandez. That one's halfway down. 
doesn't quite go. He's more of a slasher, but it shows you that they need the three-pointers to go in, that he's taken the first one of the game. Yeah, I like that ball movement on that play. They, they got it inside, back out, and then found a wide-open three-pointer. Williams goes underneath. He was left a little bit too alone because Lauskas just lost him for a second. And that's the danger with these Plymouth Raiders. They're so tough inside. If you miss open three-pointers, they're going to pound you on the other end. Prezi Blue to Gordon. Gordon with the head fake is fouled by Williams, and Gordon will go to the line for two. And I suppose if you can get the other team in foul trouble, this big front line, that can only help as well. It's true, but they also have the addition of uh, Paul Williams this week, which makes them even tougher. So... Yeah, Excuse Williams. Jamal Williams. Right? Jamal, Paul, Jamal, Paul's already Paul's out the there. Court. Jamal's on the bench. Right, which makes them even deeper inside, so they, they can give up two or three fouls here and there. I must admit, I was a bit surprised that Williams was still without a job come December. He had a great year last year with the Mersey Tigers. Really gave them a, a little something extra. Fought hard, can shoot the ball. Real useful player to have on your team. Here's Jeremy Bell, more than useful. Oh, yeah. He's he's the star of this team. It's taken him a, a couple of weeks just to gel in, and now he's found the sort of form we came to see last year with the Cheshire Jets. Rowe drives in, off the glass, doesn't go. Kozlowski's trying to get it. Williams diving hard. Great hustle from Williams to keep it alive. Bell with the turnaround. Did he walk with it, or is there a foul? There's a whistle. There's a whistle because I think the shot clock was reset and the referee saying maybe it shouldn't be. Let's have another look. There's the ball loose on the floor, tipped away by Williams. I'm guessing they're saying that uh, they never gained control of it, so there shouldn't have been a reset of the shot clock. One thing about this Plymouth Raiders team is I think they're susceptible to transition. Uh, I think if the Wolves can grab those rebounds and get out in the break, they've got a chance to, to get some wide open three-pointers, which is, which is going to be very useful in the long run. Williams with a little jump hook doesn't go. Rebound pulled in by Freeman, but they've got to do a good job on the glass, and there's no doubt exactly. that the uh, Raiders are a big, strong rebounding team. Freeman can't convert. Colbert pulls in the rebound. He's got to go inside and look to kick it out to the three-point shooters. I mean, he, he got two giants waiting for him, and he's got two wide-open guys on the perimeter. Here's Bell. Bell ran the screen. Rowe fires up. That's halfway down, and Fernandez comes from the top of the key to pull down the rebound. Fernandez with a little stutter takes it to the oh, what a block from Anthony Rowe. Threw it out, but stepped on the line. It will be possession to the walls. Ojo, it was who trying to get away on the break, just stepped out of bounds. But what a tremendous block this is from Rowe. Great block by Rowe. He uses his body well. And then, but I do like the aggressiveness by Fernandez, going in there strong, making a statement early on. Offensive foul called against Kozlowskis as he chased the screen, and it's one of those things, it's a big guy. If the guard doesn't run the screen, the defender into you, just leave him alone, don't go chasing. Exactly, Kozlowski, he's a veteran, 35 years old, he's been around a long time. He should know better than to pick up a foul in that situation. Played in. Well, too many European leagues to keep count exactly. of. He's been around Ukraine, a long, long time. Colbert lines up a three. Swish for Lamb and Colbert. Great. And it's 7-1 Raiders. Great drive by Williams. Gets inside, draws the defense, and kicks it out for the wide-open three-pointer. That's what Worcester needs to be doing. Prezi Blue out to Kozlowski's little head fake. Driving to the hole. Tosses one up off the glass. Tipped in by Richie Gordon. I like Richie Gordon. He's all over. He always has his hands on the ball when it goes up. He seems to always be in the right place at the right time. Bell, little stop and go, drives to the hole. Bell, oh, just rattled out for him, and Gordon with the rebound. This is a situation where the Wolves got to push the ball. Freeman, Freeman. with a pull-up three. Rebound not quite for Prezi Blue. Don't know if I would advise that shot, but I like the, I like the intention. Freeman pulls the ball away, but illegally so, and Paul Williams will go to the line to shoot two. So far, the Raiders are the ones that are pushing the ball and taking it right to the Wolves. Um, I think this crowd is really going to have a, an effect on the Raiders. They're in front of their home crowd, nearly a sellout, so they want to put on a show today. Williams 
Williams makes the first from the free throw line. Yeah, Williams played with Sheffield uh, last year. He also went to St. Bonaventure University in the States. He's a, a Bonnie, as they're called. Second one doesn't go, but offensive rebound. You don't often see that coming all the way out to the foul shooter. And uh, as you say, Williams was Sheffield last year and, of course, won the BBL Cup. Exactly. They had a very, very good team last year. Prezi Blue fires up for three. Doesn't quite go because Lauska's fighting for I think that came off Gordon last. Yes, it did, said the referee. As Rowe was in there for the Raiders, it will be their possession. Wolves a little slow in getting started in this game. I don't know if there's already thinking about the Christmas break or a little hangover from yesterday, but they, uh, they had a tough game yesterday, and obviously that might have affected them in a long travel, as, as I know from playing here last week. A long way from everywhere this. Even Worcester. I think Worcester's about as close a BBL team as there is to Plymouth. Fernandez pushing, flips it up and lays it in. Beautiful move. And that's what they have to do. They got to get in transition and they got to put pressure on the Raiders' defense. I think the Raiders in the half court are very, very solid defensively. It's the transition is where they're susceptible. Stolen away, not quite. Ojo recovered. He pulls up for three. In and out, Rowe going after the offensive rebound. The ball is loose, and Fernandez comes up with it. Kicked out long to Kozlowskis. The big fella out leading the break lays it in. And that's it. Four points right in the last 15 seconds. And all of a sudden, the Raiders are walking the ball up and a little bit out of their rhythm. Well, the Raiders had started so well. And they still lead, and Colbert will stretch that lead to five midway through the first quarter. We said we thought the Wolves might try and come and attack in the first few minutes. They haven't been able to do that. Well, no, they haven't broken down this half-court defense just yet. And whenever Plymouth needs a basket, they give it to their great front line. Because Lauskas off the back of the ring for three. And we also said they were going to have to make a lot of threes, and they have struggled here in the opening five minutes. Bell. Ojo bouncing it back out to Bell. Bell penetrates, dishes off through the hands of Williams. I think he was going for rebound first. Fernandez. Fernandez sets his feet for three, and he hits. All string from Fernandez cuts it down to two. He's been very, very aggressive early, and I think that's what the Wolves need is somebody that's going to step up and show the way. Fernandez actually played at Lyon last year in the uh, Leb Gold League in Spain. Very good player. First three-pointer of the game for his team after they missed their first five. Ojo for a long two. But Ojo, Plymouth will be quite happy with this little cushion here early on. Yeah, I think if they can get out of the first quarter with a, with a nice cushion, they can kind of sit on that lead for the rest of the game. James Jones in to the game for the first time. Yeah. We'll be going against uh, his brother Callum at some point, no doubt, on the other side. Are they brothers? I didn't yeah. know that. Hmm. Son of Jeff, former BBL great. They, they do look alike now that you mention it. It's Gordon driving hard to the hole, lays it in for two. All, all of a sudden, a little life here from the Worcester Wolves, and the crowd has gone silent. Jones. To Rowe. Rowe looking to spin. Good work from Freeman. That's a tough matchup for Tommy Freeman against Anthony Rowe. Rowe is so strong. I mean, he's got to be in the weight room three, four times a week. He's probably running up the aisles of GNC. He's just such a strong guy to deal with down low, especially for Tommy Freeman. Fernandez looking to penetrate. Head fake. Steps back under off the glass for two. So far, it's the Fernandez show for the Wolves. They got to keep him in the game. He's got half his team's offense with seven of their 14. Jones. They go down to row again, sizing up Freeman. Help comes from Gordon, a little bit too aggressive. That's the right defensive move to come out and help Freeman there, but he can't go after the ball like that. Exactly. I think they have to double in the low post. They're waiting until he put the ball on the floor to double team. Of course, that opens up open shooters on the wing. So they're, they're almost hoping they miss open shots. 
David Watts into the game for the first time, giving Kozlowskis a breather. Watts is another guy who could fill it up. He can, great shooter from outside, and they're hoping he can knock a couple down. He's one of those guys, if he makes the first one or two, he can have a big night. Rowe converts the first free throw, and everything right where they would like it to be for Plymouth. They lead by three, eight minutes into the ball game, which is a 31-point aggregate lead. Freeman, Fernandez, going inside to Gordon. Gordon pulls up. Probably needs to attack there rather than settle for that jump. I think he does need to attack, but I also think the Wolves need to send guys crashing the boards. You know, maybe give up a transition basket here or there to get some offensive rebounds. Trying to get to Rowe in the low post, but Freeman denies the ball. Bell has it. Down to Williams on the near side. Williams backing down out to Bell. Bell, tough shot over Watts, which almost drops for Colbert with the inside position, and he lays it back in for two. Well, the problem is when you double the low post, you have to scramble out of that double team, which often leaves offensive rebounders wide open underneath the basket, which is what happened there. Fernandez round the screen. Watts has it. Back out to Fernandez. Penetrates again, pulls up from the elbow off the back of the ring. Might come to Prezi Blue. No, Bell gets there first. I think right now Plymouth is content to kind of walk it up and run their sets. They're in no hurry at all. Well, clock is very much their friend in this game. The quicker it ticks, the better. Jones to Rowe. Williams was open for a second. It was batted away. Watts to Prezi Blue. Behind the back to Watts. Great pass from Prezi Blue. When Colbert was trying to commit the foul, he found his teammate with the behind the back pass. Gorgeous, magic-esque behind the back pass by Sherrod Prezi Blue. Definitely the best name in the BBL, Sherrod Prezi Blue. <laughs> Flinda Boyd is up there, isn't it? Maybe, maybe <laughs> second. We'll, we'll Row off the back of the ring. Rebound Williams. Trying to find some space. Gets it off through Gordon. Looks to the referee for a foul. Referee says that was okay. It's got to be the third or fourth offensive rebound already for the Plymouth Raiders, and that's got to be a huge, huge concern for Paul James. Time ticking down here on the first quarter. Prezi Blue round the screen, goes the opposite way out to Fernandez. Watts in the corner for three is short. Had the line, but not the legs. And they came in here with a big lead, the Plymouth Raiders. They've added to it here. This is exactly what they would have wanted. Yeah, this is a no-nonsense performance so far. They've come in here, they've rebounded, they've run their sets, they've played tough defense. They're not taking anything for granted. You've got to be very, very pleased if you're a Plymouth Raiders fan. And they certainly are. We've reached the end of the first quarter here at the Pavilions in the BBL Cup semi-final second leg. It's the Raiders 19 and the Wolves 16. We'll be right back after this break. Do you fancy an ice cream? Nice jugs. Is that a yes? The greatest day of It's really good, isn't it? The best. She deserves better. She deserves you, you mean? Last night, I went too far. Oh, no. I held Stan's hand. And then what? Oh, my... <laughs> what do you mean, that was it? The Café, Wednesday at 9 on Sky One HD. Starts with a Windows 7 PC. Dad? Yes, son. This human idea of Christmas shopping does my head in. I know, son. It all feels a bit alien, doesn't it? Running around panicked. <laughs> I don't understand why they don't just reserve their presents online with Argos. As a conundrum, it's up there with Justin Bieber and Eggnog. Mm, eggnog. Mmm, Bieber. Hello to guarantee a great Christmas, Argos it. Just check and reserve online and pick up all your presents that same day from over 750 stores. We believe there's a better way to shop online. Argos it. The UK's number one.
sitcom comedy is now on DVD. What should we do now, then? Now, we have the best holiday ever. Two weeks of sun, sea, sex, sand and booze. Here we go, we've been spotted. Look cool. Ba -ba 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 -ba. The Inbetweeners, the movie, on DVD now. Opium, Yves Saint Laurent. You owe a lot of money to some bad people. I have a solution. A race from San Francisco to New York. Winner gets 25 million. And if I lose? Then you're dead. Need for speed, the run. It's not what's under the tree that matters. It's who's around it. Take Home TV's most talked about show. Why is my name written down on this? Ah! Lost, the complete collection, the perfect gift on DVD. Why not try our expertly handmade finest festive fruit and nut wreath? If you got room after the turkey, Tesco, every little helps. Welcome back to Plymouth, where everything going to plan for the Raiders, who came in here with a big first leg lead in this BBL Cup semi-final, and uh, have stretched it yet further through 10 minutes. Jones, good hands from Gordon to break it up, but it's still with the man in green. Bell wide open in the corner, doesn't convert. Great rebound from Colbert, the fifth offensive rebound of the game for the Plymouth Raiders. Five offensive rebounds this early is, is way, way too many that the Wolves are giving up, and they're going to have a long night again if they continue that. And they've turned it into six points on second chance as Freeman goes to the hole, doesn't quite get the roll. James Jones with a little slap on the arm, and Tommy Freeman will go to the line to shoot a pair. Zemnikas into the game for the first time for Fernandez, and the other Jones brother Callum checks in for David Watts. That was a nice offensive offensive set right there by the Wolves. It's a pick the picker play. Freeman, who's a great shooter, you can't go under any screens. They followed him and forced the foul and going to the hoop. Well, what could have been a three-point play might end up as only one hit. The original shot bobbled out and the free throw did too. You got to remember in these two legged ties every single point is crucial. Second one is good. We're going to have another substitution with Martin going to check in for uh, Bell. And they certainly don't lose anything in speed bringing Martin into the game. Absolutely not. He's one of my favorite players in the BBL. He runs a team. He's a very, very smart player. Doesn't take too many shots. He, he knows exactly who should have the ball at the right time. Williams to Colbert for three. Lamb and Colbert with the second three of the game. He is feeling it right now. He's, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls up on the next possession. Gordon gets it back to Freeman. Freeman given some space and takes the jump shot for two. Nice play by Freeman. He's got to get aggressive if they're going to have any chance here. He's got to start taking over, shooting the ball, going to the hoop. He's their scorer. Ojo fires up, rattles out, and easy rebound for Richie Gordon. Brazy Blue now. Green comes up from Zimmerka, turns the corner, dumps it off. Great assist that from Prezi Blue. Great play. He's also another one. He can create. He can get inside on the defense. He can go by guys. He's got to start creating and making plays. 
Martin around the screen, gets it to Ojo, fires up from behind the arc, that's off the back of the ring, rebound comes all the way to the foul line, and Prezi Blue. Freeman drives along the baseline, dumps it off to Jones, outside open is Prezi Blue, steps around the defense, string music for Prezi Blue. Great offense there, they get inside, kick it out, one more dribble, Prezi Blue wide open for the three. Sherrod Prezi Blue. I just like saying his name, Dan. <laughs> Ties the game at 24. Ojo. Ojo kicks in off the back of the ring. Rebound Jones. Great box out there by Freeman. Jones dumps off to Zimnikas off the glass. Doesn't quite go. Ball tipped out of bounds, and Raiders will get possession of the ball. and. 13 minutes in, we're as we were at the beginning of the ball game with a timeout called by uh, Coach Love. They're tied at 24. Well, I think psychologically, if the Wolves can take a lead here, it's, it's going to be huge for them because, you know, if they take a lead and then go on a 7-0 run or a 10-2 run or something like that, you know, all of a sudden, the fans are going to start to sweat a little bit. The Raiders are going to start to sweat a little bit. They're going to start missing their open shots and, you know, then you never know. But they've got to get out in front, they got to run, and they got to just chip away right now. Well, that's certainly going to be the key for the Plymouth Raiders is not to get behind in this game if they can just stay like that. Conversely, as you say, if the Wolves can just get themselves to 10, that would be huge for them, and it just starts to put the seed of doubt into Plymouth's head. Well, exactly. They, they are the underdog, and they can play the underdog role, and they have nothing to lose, so... Why not go for it? Back out from the timeout come the two teams. Tied at 24 here at the Pavilions. Second leg of the BBL Cup semifinal. A place in January's final against the Newcastle Eagles at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham awaits the winner. And right now, it's the Raiders who have the big lead on aggregate in the tie. Wolves go switching the zone here. And that's one way to get a team out of a zone is to make some threes, but they don't on that occasion. Here's Jones. Jones going hard to the glass. Good defense from Martin, but Prezi Blue with the rebound. Gordon into Zimnikas. Don't think he expected it. Prezi Blue for three. That one's short. Jones trying to keep it alive and get it to Gordon, but eventually Colbert just wanted it a bit more. Wolves back in here in the 2-3 zone. They're trying to neutralize the big inside game of the Plymouth Raiders. Jones, Colbert, Colbert driving hard, kicks it out, shot clock down to four as Ojo fires up and hits for a long two. Well, against the zone, you got to watch out for Oh, He is a shooter, 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 and you got to watch out for James Jones. Those are the two. Jones, Prezi Blue, and on the far side is Freeman. Freeman drives in gets a shot up and is fouled, caught on the arm by James Jones. So he'll go to the line for two. Don't think Colbert liked that call, but I think he did get him right on the wrist as he went up. Yeah, on the rebound, on the replay there, it did look like Jones just caught him. Second one on him. And Freeman will go to the line shooting a pass. Freeman's a rookie from Ohio University in the States, which, uh, when I was a kid, they had a great player called Gary Trent, the Shaq of the Mac, some of you might know. <laughs> I think he played in the NBA for a little while as well. There's a few BBL players have uh, made their way over via Ohio University. Well, very good program over there, the Bobcats. Back in the zone for the Wolves. Martin with the bounce pass out in the corner, and that is good for three this time. He's had a few 20 footers, but this time he was all the way behind the arc. Oh, he doesn't even think about it. He gets the ball and it's going up. If they're in the zone, he knows as soon as he catches it, he's shooting. And he's, and he, and he's making it. He's a great shooter. Brezzy Blue, shot clock getting low. Zimnikas down to four. Gordon's got to go quickly here, gets the shot up, and hits from 18 feet. I'd like to see the ball go inside the Gordon a little more, force the defense to, to converge on him, and he can kick it out to the open shooters or hit a shot like that. 
Rowe in the corner. Freeman all the way out there. Freeman hits the deck. Rowe drops it down and Jones steals it off. Jones still going all the way to the hole off the glass. Tough move, doesn't quite drop. And Raiders come down with it. He missed that shot, but I like I like that from Jones. I like him pushing it right into the heart of the defense, pushing the ball up the court, getting a steal or rebound, and forcing the Raiders to, to get back quickly. Martin for three. Belly, Belly even jumped there on that three. From NBA range, too yeah. deep. There's Freeman to the glass. Little rearranged the defense enough to put him off by row. Here's Martin. Pushing down court, dumps it off to Jones, going hard pass, Richie lays it in. Cool. And that'll force Paul James into a timeout here. Great finish there by James Jones. Hang time, move the ball back and forth a little bit, spun it in. Very, very nice, and a good pass by Anthony Martin. Here's another look, and you say Martin with a good feed, but still plenty for uh, Jones to do to get past Richie, who is a good shot blocker. Oh, incredible hang time around this big shot blocker there. Well, 15 minutes into the game, and it is a three-point lead to the Plymouth Raiders, and really couldn't go any better for them than it is going right now. This is exactly what Gavin Love would have hoped for at the start of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if he can get to halftime with the score relatively even, he's going to be very, very, very pleased, and they're going to have one foot in the NIA already. While the players take a timeout, we will too. We'll be back after the break. To enjoy a great Christmas for less, I'll gossip. Right now, save up to half price and get three for two on beauty and other gifts. Like this big track, half price, now under £18. Plus, save up to half price on all coffee machines. I'll gossip. Cool bananas. Gentlemen, the world is all opportunities. Congratulate yourselves. If you have broken the monotony of a conventional age. This is my music. It makes me proud. These are my people. And this is my crowd. These are crazy, crazy. The Tesco Winter Clothing Sale is now on with fantastic savings, guaranteed to give you a nice warm feeling this winter. Tesco, every little helps. We're here to determine how it's possible that Jake got a freshly made six inch sub and a drink for just three pounds. A sub and a drink for just three pounds? All day, apparently so. How is this possible? Curious. And they say there are eight to choose from. Incredible. I just can't make this value add up. The Subway £3 lunch deal. Genius! Black Excess for her. Fragrances by Paco Rabanne. With ice and a slice of lime, experience an intriguing fusion of Tia Maria and cranberry juice. Get behind the mask. Discover more with Tia Maria.
Love Film Instant. Thousands of movies to stream instantly on your PS3, Xbox and iPad. It's more than just a DVD, blood. Try it for free at lovefilm.com. Philips Shaving and Grooming Products. Now up to half price. One more time, I'm gonna celebrate. Oh yeah, all right, I'll stop the dancing. One more time, I'm gonna celebrate. Oh yeah, all right, I'll stop the dancing. One more time, I'm gonna celebrate. Oh yeah. One more time. A weekend of top class sport starts with the Ladbrokes World Darts Championship. Saturday from noon, Sky Sports HD. Back out from the timeout. It's a Wolves ball from the end. They trail by 30 plus on aggregate. With 15 minutes to go, five minutes to go, sorry, to half time. Freeman. Freeman penetrates in. It's out to Gordon. And uh, his jump shot doesn't go. Zimakas making a nuisance of himself. Jones tips it back to Freeman. And Freeman off the back of the ring. That long rebound comes all the way out to the three point line, and Raiders can turn it the other way. It's like the Wolves still in the zone. Martin, round the screen, penetrates, kicks it out, again for three, and again he hits! Well, you know, if the ball gets to him, he's going to put it up, and he is a great shooter. He did that to us last week. We went to a zone, and he hit two or three big threes on us just when we were getting back into the game. Ojo, the leading scorer in the game now with 10, first man to double figures. Trying to get it through to Richie Gordon is uh, Tommy Freeman, but it's broken up. Williams wants the alley-oop, it goes back to Jones, who sets his feet for three, doesn't quite go. Simnikas just about pulls in the rebound. Prezi Blue off the glass, tough shot. Yeah, tough shot. Looked like he wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do, but he ended up making it work. Sherrod, Prezi Blue. Jones inside to Williams. Backing down, that pass is deflected. Prezi Blue has it. That'll be uh -oh. unsportsmanlike. You know what's coming? Unsportsmanlike yep. rule. You know, if you're the last defender, much like in football, then it's automatic unsportsmanlike foul. And he wasn't even subtle with it. It was a little grab around the waist. And you sort of think, well, actually, how much do you save your team here? Because if Prezi Blue makes two, he's already got the points he would have got on the fast break layup, and then they get possession of the ball as well. Exactly. That play, you got to make sure you're in front of the last player, and, you know, sometimes it's okay to give up a layup. You don't want to give up two shots and the ball. It's, it's a momentum play, really. He makes the first, and, of course, he could, from this play, give his team the lead. That one goes in, so it's a two-point game. They hit a three here, and they could be in front. Exactly, and if they get in front, you know, it, like we said before, it's psychological. The crowd's going to start to get silent, and the Wolves can make a run. Kozlowskis to Prezi Blue. Freeman. Freeman backs out. Prezi Blue has it now. Shot clock down to five. Great spin to the hole. Couldn't quite lay it in, but he will have a chance to tie things from the foul line. Great spin to the hole. He's the one player on the court for the Wolves who can really create the end of the shot clock. He's able to kind of get into the key and you see with the, he's a little guy, but he's athletic and can get the ball over the big front line of the Plymouth Raiders. Well, this time he draws his front iron of uh, the ring on the first free throw. Second one is good. And Talking to Paul James before the game, he was just like, I couldn't even help Martin. He's so quick. Anthony Martin to the hole, lays it in, took one in the face as well. He'll go to the line for a bonus. That was like a flash of lightning down the court. He took about four dribbles from one side of the court to the other and got an and one. Look at that. And Brezzy Blue is no slouch, and he just blew right past him there. 
as I was saying, I was talking to PJ before the game, and I was like, what went wrong last night? And he's like, I can't even be mad at the guys. You know, the way, the way Plymouth shot the ball, there was not a lot we could do about it. And some nights, you just come up against something like that. You just hope it's not a big night like a cup semi-final first leg. Exactly. Kozlowskis for three, off the mark. Not quite found his range today. We saw at Guilford last week, he was hitting them from all over the place. Colbert trying to force one in. It's broken up, and Kozlowskis picks up the pieces. Prezi Blue to Fernandez, steps back, penetrates in, going to the hole, throws it over his head to Kozlowskis, head fakes, dumps off, good pass. Oh, they still can't convert, eventually they do, Fernandez tips it in. Well, that was, that was a wild play by Fernandez, but he ended up getting the two points out of it. The Raiders here with Martin in the game, they're a much more transition-oriented team, which has put a little bit of pressure on the Wolves, and they've had to go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Rowe backing down on uh, Kozlowskis. The help came, and Rowe can't convert. Here's Fernandez to Freeman. Freeman drives strong off the glass. Offensive foul. Says the official, Colbert with the chart, uh, with the stand. Well, let's look at it here on the replay. First, well, what? he was in front of him there, but he did he did bring his arms down. So, what do you think, Dan? I wasn't sure whether he was still going a little bit lateral, but it's one of those calls. It's such a split second decision, one way or the other. You never quite know. But on that occasion, charge called. No basket and still a two-point lead for Gavin Love and the uh, Raiders. And really, at some point, and it has to be some point very soon, the Wolves have got to make a charge, otherwise they'll just play out the time. Yeah, and I think what they just did, they got a rebound, they pushed it up the court. They've had a lot of transition opportunities, but haven't really converted, which has been their downfall so far. If you've got transition opportunities you got to convert those are easy points and that's the way to get back into a game well it must be difficult for uh, coach love in this scenario where he's got to try and convince the guys that they didn't do the job yesterday and they still have more to do today but they seem to be buying into it thus far exactly it's about you know you got to be a professional you got to show up you got to do your job you know the, the entire 80 minutes of the two-legged tie so, still a long way to go in this one. In some ways, though, from a coaching perspective, it's much better to be in the scenario you were in in the semifinal, where it was 90-90 after the first leg, just go and win, rather than, well, try and forget about the 28 points that you won the first leg by. Yeah, but I think we, we were also the underdog in that, the second semifinal in Newcastle, so it made it a little bit easier. Um, I think when you're playing the second semifinal at home, there's a little bit more pressure. Colbert is whistled for a traveling violation on that spin. Wolves back in man-to-man, -man, trying to pick up the pace of the game, force some turnovers. They'll probably trap the, the low post and get some transition baskets on the other end. Freeman throws it down. Gordon gets the spin on Rowe. Circus shot underneath, and Rowe goes chasing after the block, and he turns uh, looking a bit surprised. But when you come over the top of a guy like that, it's usually cool. Yeah, even if you miss him sometimes, just the angle of it, if you swipe down on him, they're going to call a foul. I think they got to get the ball inside to Richie Gordon if they're going to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. He's very, very quick and nimble down there. Makes the first one from the foul line. This is a chance to tie it up with less than a minute to go here in the first half. He's had a great year, rookie year so far, Richie Gordon, averaging nearly 19 points and nine rebounds. Very athletic, good on the boards. Likes to, to block a shot or two. He plays very, very hard all the time. You gotta love if you're a coach. Martin round the screen, spinning, loses the ball off whose foot? It was off the foot of Prezi Blue, so it will stay possession of uh, the Wolves. Shot clock holding at seven. Jones. Jones turns the corner, drives through, kicks it out to Martin, and Martin knocks down the mid-range jump shot. Martin not shy today to let it go. He's feeling confident. He's 
He's playing a lot of minutes. They're sitting Bell, and he's playing really, really well so far. Freeman is fouled as he came around the screen. Defense just a little too aggressive there. Raiders over the limit, so it will be two free throws and a chance to level the ball game again, just 18 seconds from halftime. Yeah, if they can go into the locker room tied, they'll feel pretty good, considering I really don't think they played that well so far in the first half. I thought the Raiders have been the better team overall. Well, in the face of it, on its own, it's a pretty good game. We're tied at 39 if this one goes in as we tip down towards halftime. The problem is the massive gap that Paul James and his team exactly. face. That's, that's always in the back of your mind. Once I, the Wolves have fouls to give here. There's no reason why they shouldn't make a foul before the end of the, the half. Doesn't look like they're going to. They're going to trust the deal. Oh, they tried to there, tried and they took to the referee, it. didn't call it. They missed from close in, and Prezi Blue turns and says, I fouled him. <laughs> what more does he have to do? He gra grabbed him around the hip. Well, we've reached the half here, and 39-39, they're still as they were at the start, Flinder, and still very, very much in the favor of the Plymouth Raiders as it stands. Very much. I think at this point, the Plymouth Raiders have one foot in the NIA, and they can maybe take their foot off the gas a little bit in the second half. Well, a lot still to be done for the Worcester Wolves if they're going to make a charge here in this BBL Cup semifinal. We're at the half. It's tied at 39. We'll be back after this break. Sky Sports. Kel Brooks, American debut. Beautiful right hand. Carl Foch, Andre Ward. WBC, WBA world title belts. Watch me in the biggest fight of my career. This is my destiny. To become the best super middleweight in the world. Look into my eyes and you'll know I'm ready. Here he is. His eyes on the prize. Oh! He's lost possession already. That's got to be a disappointment. Oh, he's really not happy, is he? Hang on, what's he up to here? Oh, what a clever move. That calls for Carlsberg. Carlsberg and Sky Sports, your weeknight reward. Why not try? Specially selected, 100% British, carefully reared, free range, deliciously tasty finest bronze turkey with your cranberry sauce on Christmas Day. Tesco, every little helps. What is independence? Independence means... Independence for me is standing on your own. This is a question of our time. Based on passion. You can't fake it. And you can be yourself. Fast, super, super fast. For me, it's a community of, of creative people. Fresh and with new and different ideas. I make my own decisions. You need to be creative. I think it's about having time. That's the moment. You know, an independence I see as something quite individual. Independence can mean different things to different people. Pen. See things your way. Who's going to tell me when to stop? Who's right or wrong? Who's going to judge me? Me. Only the brave. The fragrance by Diesel. <gasps> you didn't. It's the Stakehouse Angus! Go on. Treat yourself to the new festive range at Burger King. Koala loves Cushell's cushiony softness. Oh, gossip. Right now, get this TomTom -tom sat-nav with UK and Ireland mapping half price. Now under £80. Oh, gossip. Wow. Cyprus, in your heart. Oh, my God. One million and Lady Million. Fragrances by Paco Rabanne. This Christmas at Comet. This Philips Senseo coffee maker is less than half price. And the 
Lexus Zeus laptop with six gig of memory is 369. And this Panasonic 37 inch 1080p TV is only 349. So this Christmas, visit our stores or go online. Come and play at Comet. Welcome back to Plymouth, where the Raiders are 20 minutes away from the BBL Cup final. They lead by 28, courtesy of their romping victory in the first leg up in Worcester. They are tied through 20 minutes here. And these Plymouth fans who travel in their numbers on the big occasions will be looking forward to another trip to the NIA, although they'll be hoping it's a better one than the last time they went there. They had a bit of a nightmare in the BBL Cup final a couple of years back with a record-breaking loss. They'll be wanting to wipe that away. And that will be a foul as Rowe went after the block. The only question is, because he pulled the net, does it count as a goal ten? Well, I think it might have been a little bit after the, the foul and the call. But I think the Wolves are going to come out and they're going to give everything they have and play as if their life depended on it. They, you might see some pressing. You might see some trapping. You might see some threes in transition. You're going to see some excitement here from the Wolves in the second half. Well, now is the time, really. If they don't do it in the next uh, few minutes, it's they're just going to leave themselves too much to do too late on. And there's a little bit of full court pressure from Fernandez. Bell back in the game. Colbert now guarded by Freeman. The double team comes. It's skipped round, but picked off by Prezi Blue. Great double team there. That's exactly what they want. Get out in transition, lay up for the Spaniard Fernandez, and all of a sudden, three points in 30 seconds, four points. And the Wolves with a little bit of hope, a glimmer. Well, if they can just rattle off six or seven without reply, just gives them a chance, doesn't it? Colbert now looks up at the shot clip, sees it down to six, goes around the screen. Double team comes again. Rowe has to kick it on. Ojo for three, short. Freeman with the rebound. They left the shooter wide open, but he missed the open three. And here we go. Perez, Prezi Blue back in transition the other way. Freeman around the screen. Dumps off to Gordon, hands off to Kozlowskis, bouncing into Gordon. Gordon lays it in. And here we go, six in a row now for the Wolves. First six of the second half. You don't see that too often, pick and roll between the two big guys, but Kozlowski's a great, great passing big man, and he ran into perfection. Rowe in the low block. Skips it round. Colbert fires up for three off the back of the ring. Prezi Blue with the rebound. Oh, Kozlowski is just a little bit too low for the big fella to reach down for. Oh, the big guy, not as nimble and agile as he used to be. Back in the day, he would have caught that with one hand and reverse stuffed it, but <laughs> not anymore. It's woken the uh, fans up a little bit. Plymouth looked very, very flat early on in the second half. Good hands from Gordon to knock it loose, but Rowe chases it down to the corner. Rowe driving hard to the finger roll, gets the first score. It's taken almost two minutes into the second half for Raiders to get the scoreboard moving. Prezi Blue with a quick drive to the basket is slapped across the arms. He'll go to the line for two. Good move, good strong move by the little guy all the way to the hoop. I wonder what the story behind number 44 is, Dan. I wonder what made him pick that one. Don't know. A couple of years ago, it would have been an illegal number. Oh, exactly. It used to be number four through 15, right? Yeah. Little then, guys always with the with the single digits. Yeah, and the big guys with 15. Then they stretched it out where you could go from 20 to 25, and now you can do anything you can sing, signal on one hand, I believe, is the rule. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, so it's... Up to 55, really. Up to 55 is as high as you can go. And here is number 55 coming up with uh, steel and Fernandez behind the back to Prezi Blue, and he lays it in. And the lead out to eight now. And here's Fernandez picking up full court. They're going to have to slow it down, run a set. Plymouth's got to get the ball inside to their captain, Anthony Rowan, and let him make a play. Here he is. He has to come to the three-point line, though, to get it. They go down low to Colbert. 
Colbert, offensive foul against Freeman. And Sky Sports viewers watching over the last few weeks will know that Freeman knows how to take a charge. He's always putting his body on the line. Great, great defense there by Freeman. He's not popular with the Plymouth fans. I think that's fair to say. They've been <laughs> booing him from the start. And well, him taking a charge there hasn't helped his reputation in these parts. Watch out, Dan. Before you know it, we've we got a game on our hands here. Well, a basket here, and it's a double-figure Worcester lead. And the momentum is most definitely on their side right now. Prezi Blue. Fernandez. Gets it to Prezi Blue. Shot clock getting low. Prezi Blue for three off the front of the ring. Kozlowskis can't chase it down, but Bell gets there. Bell's been very, very quiet so far this game. Spent a lot of time on the bench in that second quarter. But I'll... back in here. Fernandez has it not loose and just runs out of room. Try to do a little bit too much there. I've been impressed with Fernandez. He's kind of been a catalyst in this game and really took it to the Plymouth defense, but that time he tried to do a little bit too much. Timeout call by Coach Love, and his lead is still 20 points on aggregate, but he won't be pleased with the opening three minutes plus here of this second half. At one point, I heard him shout, what are we doing? Because he was getting disappointed with the way the guys were playing defense. And you can see he's really unhappy. Yeah, and I think he has a right to be. Plymouth has not only played poorly on offense in the second half, but they haven't been getting back in transition defense. And that's the one way Worcester is going to get back into this second late semifinal tie is by getting easy transition baskets. And it's just about trying to convince his guys that this is not done yet. It's not over. And it's. As a player, it's really easy to look up at the scoreboard and go, ah, oh, we're eight down, but we're still 20 up. Exactly. But coaches always see the, 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 the cloud with the silver lining. <laughs> they always see the cloud. The players concentrate on the silver lining. And the fans now trying to make some noise and get behind their team. Well, Foxy, the great mascot here, is get, trying to get the cr crowd into it. They've been a little subdued so far. It might be the weather here in the West Country. Yeah, it's gray and wet and miserable outside. That's the beauty of basketball. It's nice and warm in here. Rowe has it. Martin down to Williams. Williams spinning past Kozlowskis, kicks out. Bell steps in, rebound Kozlowskis, and once again, the Wolves can take this to a double-digit lead. Foul is caught off the ball. Williams, the offender, as he just cleared out uh, Kozlowskis. That is the third personal foul on Paul Williams. I wonder if we're going to see Jamal Williams here in the second half if there's foul trouble. We've got the impression uh, at the start of the game from Coach Love that he didn't really want to use him this week because he'd only just come and join the team on Friday. So he wants to try and get him into the swing of things first. Kozlowskis probably could have gone the other way. Spins totally out of control and throws it out of bounds. He probably had a left-handed lay if he just didn't realize it. It looked like he was wide open there on the left, but sometimes when your back is to the basket, you don't know exactly where the defense is. Well, he's just got yanked there. I'm sure Coach James is going to tell him about that. One Lithuanian replaces the other different types of plays, even though uh, Kozlowskis is the bigger of the two. Zimnikas more the power player inside, and he gets the rebound. Martin also into the game for Plymouth Raiders. Prezi Blue down to Gordon. We've been stuck on 49-41 for a few minutes now. Ball comes through to Freeman, and that... When you're 20 down is not what you need. Yeah, I think Paul James is not going to be happy with that. You know, now's the time where you take every shot, every basket is valuable. Behind a wild behind the back pass, not what the doctor ordered. Long two. And that's what happens. Instead of getting an eye shot at the other end, you give up two. Exactly. Freeman, Freeman ran right into the screen there, allowing Oho to get a wide open look. And if anybody on the court, you don't want to get a wide open look, it's Oho. 
Rezu Blue inside to Gordon. Gordon from the foul line, just inside, knocks it down for two. Nice shot, very skilled big man. He put it on the floor, shoot it a little bit, block shots. Been impressed by him. Martin. Looking to get rid of the ball, eventually gets it to Bell. Bell spinning into trouble, gets out of it. Five on the clock. Got to shoot it, Martin has it, drives through, tosses it up off the back of the ring and just about pulled in by the big Lithuanian. Prezi Blue, try to force one down there, but Rowe broke it up, Martin going quickly, Martin goes up and is blocked by hey, Tommy Freeman. He is so fast. From one side of the court to the other, he gets as fast as anybody in the BBL. It just seems like he goes that little bit quicker. Everybody else is in slow motion or something. He just seems so fast compared to even quick players in the BBL. Exactly. When you talk about transition, he's the point guard you want on the floor because he can get up and down as good as anybody. And I think that's Gavin loves me, somebody who can kind of run the team and be a catalyst right now. So he's taking Bell out of the game and well, well move Bell over to the two and put Martin in as the point guard. Makes the second. Seven point lead in favor of the Wolves. They've still a long way to go. Gordon backs down, spins, little baby hook doesn't go. Rowe pulls it in. Wolves has got to crash the board there. There's nobody crashing the board to get any second chance opportunities. Rowe from 18 feet knocks it down. That's his shot. It's not a pretty shot, but it's very, very effective. Just can't leave him open at the top of the key like that. Fernandez round the screen. Stops, goes, and Bell, as he tends to do, ducks underneath and tries to knock that ball loose. That time he was called for a foul. This time he wasn't quite right on that, but Bell's a good defensive player. Just if he would have kept his hands straight up, he would have been a great defensive play. And we're in the bonus, aren't we? Yeah. Six minutes in. That's the fifth foul against the Raiders this quarter. So it'll be two free throws, which Fernando misses the front end of. Batsay misses them both, but the second one did eventually drop in. Squeezed that one in. Looks like the Raiders have settled, settled down just a little bit here after a very poor start to the third quarter. Rowe. Rowe driving in, dancing his way through the lane, gets it to Williams. Williams has to force it out. Shot clock down to four as Bell fires up. Tough shot from Jeremy Bell. Tough shot from Bell. He's great at that. Just when you think you played fantastic defense, one dribble fade away, and he just, it's like a knife in the heart. Great hands to knock it loose, but Zimnikas comes up with it. Fernandez with the rush jump shot. Gordon gets there, but can only get a fingertip on it. It's out of bounds. And it will be possession to the Raiders in a moment's time because, first of all, a timeout has been called with three minutes to go and gives us a chance to have another look at this shot from Bell. Just falling backwards against the pressure of defense and shot clock. Yeah, and as a defender, there's nothing you can do. You just throw your arms up and say, yeah, I played great defense and you made a better shot. And that's what it is. And he's known for that. He can do that all game long. That's what he did last game in the, in the uh, yesterday. In the, First leg, of, first leg of the semifinal. Yeah, 33 points Bell had. He was the BBL's leading scorer last season. It's and taken, MVP. And MVP, yeah. It's taken him a little while to get back to quite those heights. I mean, he was still averaging 19 a game. Exactly. But uh, he was a few points higher than them last year. Well, Foxy in the time out there, they look like they have, as you say, re-established themselves here Raiders came out of the halftime break a little bit slow but they've just regained their control they're only down four now yeah, and I think that's good coaching by Gavin Love he called a timeout earlier got on his team told him hey let's focus this is, thing isn't over yet you know and since then 
they've, they've settled down and ran their sets, got back on defense and played much, much better. And I think inserting Anthony Martin into the match has, has helped that, moving Bell to the two, allowing him to shoot the ball and not worrying about running the team has helped. Here is Martin bringing the ball over the halfway line for the Raiders. Getting it to Bell. Williams trying to post up. Bell goes to the 45 to send it down to him. Now he goes, spins into a double team, throws Triple it around. Team. Bell, four on the shot clock. Penetrates, tough one again. This time it's short and rebound Gordon. Wolves got to get out and run here. Here's the pick and roll in transition. Prezi Blue with a little pull up. Zimnikas is there for the offensive rebound and he lays it back in. I think they can do that all game. Pick and roll in transition. It's called a drag screen for Prezi Blue. He, he runs the pick and roll very, very well. Martin has men running across off screen. Still has it. Bounces down to Williams. Go for three. And they've left him open so many times. So today. many times. And he's made him pay almost every time. 15 now. He's the joint leading scorer with Richie Gordon. Prezi Blue down to Watts. Watts going the long way round and tosses it in off the back of the ring. Good quick move. He's not known for his post moves. But that was very good. Caught the ball, knew exactly what he, wanted, what he wanted to do as soon as he got it. Martin Speed draws another foul. This time Prezi Blue called for it. It's hard as a defender to stay in front of him because he's so quick. Yeah, I think you got to give him a little space. He's not going to pull up in transition and shoot a jump shot over. You just got to give him space and let him dribble into you. Williams. Williams, tough shot, good defense, and rebounded by Watts. Watts with the quick release three, tipped by Zimnikas, and Jones gets it back. Backdoor, Prezi Blue, broken up by Martin. Martin pushing, gets the pass to Bell. Bell steps back on it, and there's a foul. I think it'll be on uh, Richie Gordon. his second. Bell, look, as soon as he got fouled, people would have just shot the ball at the hoop. He would have had two free throws. Instead, it's out of bounds. Saw an open Anthony Rowe. I think that was the distraction. Threw it to his teammate instead. Well, always a good unselfish play. Thrown away. Wolves ball. Minute to go here in the third quarter. Worcester leading Plymouth by five, but trailing by 23 on aggregate. This is the time of the game where you throw all your cards on the table and anything you got, you got to try it. Jones, around the screen. Pulls up from the foul line off the back of the ring. Tip dunk from Richie Gordon. So active down there. They got to box him out. He's so long, so athletic. When the ball goes up, he's always got a chance for a rebound in a basket. Bell open in the corner for three, a little bit short. Watts can only tip it down. Bell gets it back to the hole and lays it in. Somebody else is really active. That's Bell. When you're able to average 20 plus a game, you're always around the ball. Final seconds here of the third period. Wolves with the ball and the lead, but it's stolen away. Martin with Ojo and he's fouled by Watts. It'll be on Sportsmanlike, and then Gordon hits hard. And they don't like that round here. Wolves starting to get frustrated. The ref's got to take control of this game. It could, could get ugly. And Sportsmanlike foul was called first on Watts. And uh, you see, there's the steal, and then here comes the unsportsman like just a grab to stop the fast break, but it was that play that they didn't like. I think it was the right call, the unsportsmanlike call. 
it's always dangerous when somebody's in transition. You want to stop them, but you got to go for the ball. If you don't go for the ball, it's unsportsmanlike foul. First free throw is good. 8.2 left in this period. Ojo's played great. I, to me, he's the MVP of the game so far. Every time Worcester's made a run, he's hit a big shot or a free throw or something. He's got 17, leads his team, joint leader in the game, and a chance for them to cut it to one or potentially tie with a three. I don't think Morty sees the clock. He does see it now. The fans shouted at him to go, and that will do it. Well, a good start to the uh, quarter by the Worcester Wolves, but Plymouth responded, looked for a second there. They were going to get it out to 10 and maybe give Plymouth something to think about, but they came out well with the Raiders. Yeah, I think Worcester did exactly what they wanted to do at the beginning of the third quarter. Very, very aggressive defensively, pushing the ball up the court, trying to get easy baskets. You know, and after that timeout called by Gavin Love, things settled down a lot for the Plymouth Raiders. And right now, right now, I, uh, you could say they're close to you. Well, the Raiders are 10 minutes away from the BBL Cup Final. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this. How sexy does Sarah think she is? Safety seven. I don't think she's particularly come across very sexy to me. Maybe a three. The Devil's Dinner Party, Wednesday at 8, Sky Atlantic HD. Dad? Yes, son? This human idea of Christmas shopping does my head in. I know, son. It all feels a bit alien, doesn't it? Running around panicked. <laughs> I don't understand why they don't just reserve their presents online with Argos. As a conundrum, it's up there with Justin Bieber and Eggnog. Mmm, Eggnog. Mmm, Bieber. Hello there. To guarantee a great Christmas, Argos it. Just check and reserve online and pick up all your presents that same day from over 750 stores. We believe there's a better way to shop online. Argos it. <laughs> Emporial Money Diamonds, the fragrance for women. Cannon up. Fire! Bang on! Right on! That's the war one. Let's celebrate with a pint of me! Huzzah! Huzzah! There is nothing like a pint of Bombardier. English, ever reliable and damn tasty. A bit like me. Behind us. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Come to. Hello. Come to. No. No. <laughs> what should we do now, then? Now we have the best holiday ever. Two weeks of sun, sea. I think he might be drowning. Sex, booze. Oh, hello. Sand and booze and sex. Can one of you help me? I think she might be a two-man job. The Inbetweeners, the movie on DVD now. Though your world is changing, I will be the same. Gucci by Gucci, the fragrance. There are things happening that I can't explain. What's going to happen to us? Super 8 on Blu-ray and DVD. Oh, my God! Own it now for an incredible low price. Why not try our expertly handmade finest festive fruit and nut wreath? If you've got room after the turkey, Tesco, every little helps.
Welcome back to the pavilions where the Raiders are 10 minutes away from the NIA. They trail here by three, but they lead by 25 on aggregate. And really, that has never been in doubt in this game. Ball well, maybe for a couple of minutes at the start of the second half. It's been very, very comfortable for them. Rowe with the jumper cuts it to a one-point game. Almost seems automatic when he's in that position. Reminds me of, for those of you uh, that are NBA aficionados, Lloyd Bott, who used to play for the Clippers. Whenever he had that 15-footer, it was always good. Gordon to the hole. That one will drop in for him. It had a think, and he'll go to the line for a bonus. Good, strong move there by Gordon. Found number four on Paul Williams. He's really held his own against this really strong, intimidating front line of the Raiders today. But Gordon is the game's leading scorer, looking for point number 20 here from the free throw line. And uh, he's already got a double-double with 10 rebounds. 20 and 10, good numbers. Very good numbers. Martin penetrates quickly and got caught. And did he just twist his ankle as he landed that? Oh, I hope not. He's just going to, I think, tighten the boots a little bit. Just looked like he might have rolled his ankle a bit as he landed. Let's see if we can see it on this replay. It was just there as he came down. Again, Martin is so quick. I mean, the defense, they've got to pack into the key a little bit more to, to show that they're there. If they're out guarding their men on the perimeter, there's too much space inside for Anthony Martin. Well, he seems okay now. Just an adjustment of the laces, and he makes the first free throw. This to make it a one-point game. Remember, because it's a cup semi-final, no overtime unless Plymouth win by uh, Worcester win by 28. But if the scores are tied at the end, we will not go to overtime. Lobbed up, oh, jammed in by Gordon Freeman with the assist. Great pass. No bounce pass, no chest pass, so he threw it way up into the sky where the only person who could get it was R Richie Gordon. Ojo for three, hits again. He's up to 20 now. And that is his fourth three-pointer in eight attempts. And how many times are they going to let him get out there and shoot an open three-pointer? He'll, he'll knock it down every single time. Freeman. Zimnikas. Driving to the hole, the big fella kicks it out. Home fans wanting to travel, nothing doing. Fernandez with shot clock at three, fires up off the glass. Managed to squeeze that one in. Good, strong move by Fernandez. What I noticed most on the stat sheet is Wolves two for 12 three-pointers so far in this game. And we were saying right at the top of the show, as Rowe uncharacteristically misses one from the top, that they had to shoot the three-point shot really well if they were going to win this game. And Richie Gordon from the three-point line. And coming in, Worcester, the best three-point shooting team in the BBL so far. Exactly, and I thought they've, they've played defense relatively well, except for letting Ojo get open looks. But you, if you can't hit the three, it's going to be tough to overcome a 28-point deficit. Gordon knocked it loose. Smile on his face and a nod for the official. His third personal. That one called for the reach. Janisowskis checks in for the first time today. Big seven-footer. Third Lithuanian in the game. Only one of his compatriots out there at the moment. You got to remember, basketball is absolutely huge Oh, it's huge in massive Lithuania. in Lithuania. Of course, you were there in the uh, summer. Yeah, GB was there, and Colbert hits the three. Oh, it's like a religion out there. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's the way football is here. And they've had some great, great players come out of Lithuania. Jessica Cabbage is probably the best. He's a good player, I tell you. Zimnikas inside goes against his compatriot and 
Janisowskis is called for the foul. The home fans wanting a jump ball call. They thought he had hold of the ball. Gavin Love also wanted a jump ball. Let's see it here on the replay. Ooh, it's close to one, isn't it? Looks like pretty good defense. Well, instead of getting a jump ball, coach has got himself a warning. Any more, and it's a tee, said the referee. I think overall the referees have done a very good job today. I think we're blessed to have some of the best referees in Europe here in the BBO. And there speaks a man who's had whistles against him all over Europe. Well, hopefully they'll be joining <laughs> my end. Hopefully I'll get some calls next game for that comment, huh? Kamba Ho. I think you got Worcester next, haven't you? We do, right after right after Christmas on the 28th. What have you learned on your scouting mission about the Wolves here today? Well, they're a good team. They haven't shot as well as they can shoot, but they're a very good team. A little susceptible to the to the three ball. Freeman can't convert. Yeah, they've struggled from the three-point line as well, the uh, Wolves. Just two of 13 from behind the arc. Oh, drove the three in the corner of the assist from Bell. That man has not struggled at all from three today. Five of uh, nine it is now. Bell call for the foul as Prezi Blue drove to the hole. Quick move by Prezi Blue, very quick move. He's also played quite well today, Prezi Blue. Ruined the team, got into the key, created a little bit. He's up to 13. Percy Blue actually was playing in EBL second division early in his career with the Northampton Neptunes. Now he finds himself as one of the better point guards in the EBL. Of course, played with uh, Worthing last season, making the switch to Worcester over the summer. Just a few words exchanged there between Martin and Prezi Blue after that foul. You'd like to see the Raiders still playing really hard right now. They're not taking anything for granted, and I think you can attribute that to, co to good coaching by Gavin Lowe. Colbert backs down. Good defense from Gordon forces it out. Bell to that fall away shot. Janisowskis pulls in the rebound. The big fella going to work, comes back to the hook. Not quite, and Gordon one hands in a rebound. Good move by the big man, created some space, little right hand baby hook. He's got some shooting touch as well, can go out. I don't know whether he can go all the way out to the new three point line, but certainly he could stretch it out to the old one. Sideline ball to the Wolves, they lead by three, but not enough time, I don't think, for them to make up the rest of the points that they gave up. And really, if Worcester could take back the good hands from Yanisowskis to steal it away, if they could take back those middle two quarters from the first leg, boy, what would they give for those 20 minutes again? Oh, in and out for Ojo. And uh, it. through the hands of Yanisowskis, Prezi Blue has it. Unsportsmanlike foul is caught off the ball. Gordon and uh, Ojo were... Uh, lined up together and they got Sojo who went to the ground there, yeah. yeah didn't quite see it. let's see if we can see what happens in the replay here they are bumping well i'm not it's sure not, how that's a foul on that him. angle but i don't know i don't know where the intentional foul was that's an interesting call but gordon goes to the line for the two free throws And he knocks them both down. Takes his personal tally to 26, the game's leading scorer. Now one of the officials has just come to the table. Not quite sure what the clarification is. They're just going to have a chat. Oh, is it an ejection? I think they've ejected him, have they? Well, I think I'm they not, have. I'm, 
Unless it was he's, because, did he get the unsportsmanlike in the first half? He's and got to go two, to the locker room. Two yeah. unsportsmanlikes and he's gone. Exactly. He, he Remember the play where he grabbed him by the waist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got to go to the locker room. Wow, what a bizarre end to a very good game for Michael Ojo. 23 points, but ejected for two unsportsmanlike fouls. The first one was unnecessary. The second one was hard to see. Well, he can be very pleased with his performance yeah. today, I'll tell you that. And I don't think he'll be too disappointed uh, because the game is already won for as far as they're concerned, or at least the tie is, as Jones makes the jump shot. Good move. Jones, the captain of, of the English basketball team. Very solid move, one for the pillow. Fernandez. Prezi Blue fires up for three and he hits. Good shot. Prezi Blue has played the entire game along with Richie Gordon. They must be in fantastic shape, both of them. Neither of them look too tired right now. Jones, especially on the back end of a doubleheader for the two teams. And there's going to be a foul there on Richie Gordon. And some ironic applause from the Raiders fans who are less than impressed at the uh, ejection of... Uh, their star player today. Yeah. Here's another look. And he just gets a little too close in as Janisowskis tries to go around him. And then let's uh, let's go back to that unsportsmanlike foul. Here they uh, are just there. Well, it's hard to see anything that he did there. It almost looked like Richie Gordon pushed uh, Yeah, it the looked ground. more like yeah, Gordon yeah. made the, co the contact. But At first, I thought it was going to be a intentional against Gordon. But what a bizarre way to uh, to leave the game. Yeah, exactly. Colbert to the line for the bonus. At least and you wanna... just get the, you just get the feeling the way the crowd has been whipped up by that that the Raiders want to actually win this game, not just the tie, but they're going to go for it in these last four and a half well, minutes. Well, definitely, trouble. I think that's what the crowd wants. They didn't show up just to see them go through the motions in the fourth quarter. Colbert makes the second free throw. And, I, and I, think, I think good teams have to try and win every game, you know, no matter what the situation, even if you're up by 28 already in the first leg of the semifinal. And I think it, it's, it's something you have to practice and something you have to get good at is, is winning games. And, of course, you can never win too many games at home. It helps bring the crowds back. And they did lose earlier this season to the Wolves in this building. Their other two defeats have both been uh, on the road. They want to win as many games as you can in front of your own fans. Exactly. You win games, you sell tickets. Simple as that. While the players take a timeout, we will too. We'll be back after the break. Ta -da. Oh. Here he comes. He's got into some good space here. But is he too early? He looks very exposed. Oh, a good move. And another. That's a great save. Oh, and here comes the support at last. The lad's done well. And don't they just know it? That calls for a Carlsberg. Carlsberg and Sky Sports, your weeknight reward. Fragrances by Paco Rabanne.
The Tesco Winter Clothing Sale is now on with fantastic savings, guaranteed to give you a nice warm feeling this winter. Tesco, every little helps. We're here to determine how it's possible that Jake got a freshly made six inch sub and a drink for just three pounds. A sub and a drink for just three pounds? All day, apparently so. How is this possible? Curious. And they say there are eight to choose from. Incredible. I just can't make this value add up. The Subway three pound lunch deal. Genius. Guilty Intense. The new fragrances for him. And for her. What should we do now, then? Now, we have the best holiday ever. Two weeks of sun, sea. I think he might be drowning. Sex, booze. Oh, hello! Sand and booze and sex. Why don't you help me? I think she might be a two-man job. The In-Between is the movie on DVD now. To enjoy a great Christmas for less, Argos it. Right now, save £100 on this Dell laptop with Pentium dual-core processor and 500 gig hard drive. Now under £350. There's up to half price off all cameras and pocket camcorders, including the biggest brands. Plus, save up to half price on the latest video games and accessories for all the family. Argos it. I love this planet. Your best, please. Oi, oi, oi! The kings of the hockey are back at the Palace of Dreams. The Labyrinth World Dance Championship starts Thursday, 7 p.m. Sky Sports HD1. officials uh, are the villains I think the pantomime villains we're in we're in pantomime season uh, of the piece here in this fourth quarter after that second unsportsmanlike foul that saw uh, Michael Ojo ejected let's have one more look at this and we'll see if we can see what it is here they are coming right near us in the middle of your screen there's a little bump there wow that seems very harsh, very, very harsh. I mean, you get knocked to the floor and you get an intentional yeah. foul called against you. Rough. It, I mean, it was hard to see where a foul was committed by him there, let, let alone an exactly. sportsman like one. But it's in the book that way, and that's all that matters. Fernandez out to uh, Kozlowskis, dumps it out to Gordon. And Janoselskis pulls in the rebound. Martin. Colber drives it. Oh, it was a good idea, but it just went through the hands of Anthony Martin. Colber is so skilled off the dribble, can seize the floor very well when he puts it down. Especially for a man his size. Prezi Blue. Oh, he's just uh, space opened up in front of him because Laskis gets the rebound, runs out to the three point line. That's a tough pass. Freeman caught it though and missed the three. And Again, that's been the Achilles heel today for the Wolves is a three point shot. You wouldn't think so. That's not really no. their strength. Three of 15 they are from behind the arc. And Laskis forcing one up, gets the rebound is uh, in the hands of Gordon. Wolves still pushing strong. There's a pick in. And transitions again. Fernandez. Because Lauskas is loitering behind the three point line, but it goes into Gordon and he's fouled by Jones. Jones is quick to apologize for it, and Richie Gordon will go to the line. Gordon has just been so strong today. How many points does he have? 26. 26 points. He's played the entire game as well.
nine of 10 from the free throw line he's been today. 12 rebounds and 28 points. Martin pushing quick, offensive foul once again. And I've lost count, but I reckon in the last three weeks, Freeman has taken something like seven or eight charges in front of our cameras. And coaches have to love that. If you're willing to put your body on the line for the team, that's great. Some guys are allergic to offensive fouls. <laughs> Prezi Blue keeps going, dishes off, jam down by Richie Gordon. I think if the Wolves can win this game, they would feel pretty good about themselves. Well, yeah, you just think if they'd managed to just bring it down to 15, 18, what last three minutes we'd have with the seven point lead here. Kozlowskis out to Jones. James Jones misses the three. Yanisowskis with the rebound, knocked away by Freeman. Second attempt for Yanisowskis, can't convert. And he, hasn't, he hasn't converted, but he's been active he, when he's got in the game. You said his name a lot. He's always involved somewhere or another when he's on the court, Yanisowskis. Played with Guilford last year, of course. And Gordon will again go to the free throw line. Hernandez is constantly, constantly attacking. He's got a lot of Spanish in his game. You know, it's not very orthodox, but he gets into the key and he makes a lot of plays. Jeremy Bell will sit down. I'm sure that's the last we'll see of him this evening. Haven't needed the explosive Jeremy Bell that they got in leg one with 33 points. His job was done up in Worcester. Gordon's short on the second, it almost comes back to him, but Colbert got there first. Colbert loses it out of bounds, and home fans thought he was fouled. The weave here from yeah. the Wolves. Leicester ran a lot of that last year. Not seen much of it this year. There's a bump foul from Fernandez on Martin. You can see some smiles breaking out from the Raiders players. They felt like they've done their job and they're going to be going to the NIA with a chance to take home a trophy. Here's another look at the foul. Just a little bump. He was never getting back. And two minutes to play in the ball game. And Gavin Love is obviously concentrating on tonight because he's called a timeout because his team at eight down they still have a 20 point cushion but he's obviously wanting to win this game yeah and i think you can respect that from a coach's standpoint and i think the fans here they want to they want to see a victory they're still all the fans are still here i don't think anybody's left the arena even though they know there's still 20 point difference between these two teams cheerleaders are still going strong fox he's still involved in the timeout <laughs> Not sure what he uh, adds, but I'm sure it's something. <laughs> well, they do put on a good show in Plymouth. And the team is pretty good, too. Very good. I think they've kind of found their stride in the last few weeks and starting to play very, very well. Well, I must confess, at the start of the season, when I looked at Plymouth's roster, I thought they're in as a team that looks like it might challenge. And they've actually added to that roster since the start of the season with Bell and Williams coming in. They look like a team to beat in the BBL, and they look like a team that's two minutes away from a cup final appearance. It's a club that has won a lot of silverware in its time and would love to add the BBL Cup to their trophy cabinet. They will have a chance next month at the NIA against the Newcastle Eagles. I'm excited for that game. That's going to be a great, great game. It's almost a pass there as uh, Richie Gordon grabs the rebound and, and sticks it back. How do you see the matchup going, the Raiders and the uh, Eagles? Where do you see the strengths and the weaknesses, the key battles? Well, I, I think it might 
The difference for the Raiders is going to be their inside game. They're very, very strong inside. Um, I think Jeremy Bell is going to be the X factor in that game. His ability to change the game with his with his scoring. You know, if he's on that night, watch out Newcastle. But of course, Newcastle, they've got the experience. They've won so many trophies in the last few years. They know how to win. That's the thing. Newcastle averaged like two trophies a year. And they had a slim pickings last year with nothing doing. So they'll be wanting to get the silverware going again, Newcastle Eagles. But and they've been absolutely unstoppable so far this yeah. year. And they did, of course, beat the Raiders by 23 up in Newcastle, although that's a tough old road trip from here to Newcastle. To be fair, I think the Raiders are much, much better now than they were back, you know, a month ago or so. But you made you made virtually that trip last weekend from Newcastle on a Friday night. You did at least get to stop halfway down in Leicester before coming down here. It's a long old journey. It's not easy, and I think that's going to be a problem for the Raiders in, in the championship this year. Is they're going to play great at home because teams have to make that travel. But on the road, of course, it's it's a huge disadvantage to travel to places like Scotland and Durham and Newcastle. It was one of their Achilles heels last year, their away form, but they do look a much better team. Colbert for three, all string, cuts it to a three-point game with a minute to go. The crowd's getting into it. They want to see a victory. They don't care about the second leg of the semifinal. Kozlowski's with that little through the leg. But remember, no overtime on a tie. The game's finished on a tie with a Raiders aggregate victory. Bro puts his head in his shirt. He knew he didn't need to gamble out on that one, commits the foul. And they're in the bonus, so Prezi Blue goes to the line to extend this lead. Especially late in the shot clock. Silly foul by Rowe. He knew it right away. Prezi Blue with 17 points is now. Make that 18. He's the second top scorer on his team behind Richie Gordon, who will uh, hope to add to his 32 and 12 in this last 45 seconds. And Prezi Blue makes them both. Five point lead. Martin. Colbert in the corner. Driving to the basket, lays it in for two. Great move by Colbert. He actually played in college with a teammate of mine, Aaron Hardy. They were a formidable duo. Oh, that was some that was some combo, those two guys. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Both putting up big numbers now in the BBL and Wolves ticking time down. Trying to run out the clock here. Prezi Blue dumps off to Gordon. Gordon with the finger roll. 17 seconds to go. It's a five-point lead. Martin's got to push the ball here. They need a quick score. Jones fires up for three. Short. Row going for it, but uh, Gordon got there first. Well, Worcester are going to win this second leg. And uh, good, f what a finish. Not quite. Freeman is blocked by Yanisowskis as the buzzer sounds. Will they call it done? No, they'll call it a foul. And it will be two shots for Tommy Freeman, but they don't matter. It's just about how much they win here by. Here's another look. Good foul. Good call. And Freeman will shoot them both here but it doesn't make any difference because the Plymouth Raiders are going to go through to the BBL Cup final having done the job up in Worcester and really they gave themselves nothing to do today all they had to do was turn up and play that's all the work was done last night yeah they've got to be so happy with themselves the chance to win a trophy this year I mean that's what they're playing for they didn't play great today, but they did enough. It was a professional, no-nonsense performance. And... and they're going through. One second to go, they put back on the clock. So Freeman will have to shoot out this free throw. And Plymouth will just need to inbound the ball, and the celebrations can begin. The Plymouth Raiders are going to the BBL Cup Final. They may have lost here in the second leg by seven, but no doubt they were comfortable winners over two legs. And really, 
The job was done in the second and third quarter in Worcester, and that was enough for Plymouth to get through. But Worcester came, they played hard enough. They just left themselves way too much to do. Well, I was impressed by their performance. They could have folded early. They could have said, we played terrible last night. You know, we're going to we're gonna just fire up some threes and do look, think about our stats. But they didn't. They came out here. They played as a team. They played well. They defended. They just didn't shoot the ball they wanted to the way they wanted to. So you can't fault them for that. Great victory for the Raiders then. They're through to the BBL Cup Final and will take on Newcastle at the NIA next month. Well, Paul, uh, beaten semi-finalists, but at least you won the game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Coach Love and his team. You know, they played a tremendous game. Um, in the first leg, uh, which kind of paid uh, paid to the tie, but um, you know we're delighted to have come down here and actually won the game. Although we've lost the match, yeah, you know the team talk was about just coming down here and trying to win the game, and uh, we did that. Just left yourself too much to do in the first leg, really. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a little bit of uh, inexperience, really, but um, you know I'm, I'm delighted with the way we're going. You know, we're trying to make, you know, we're trying to build a dynasty here, basically at Worcester. You know, it's just we're heading in the right direction, and just making the semi-final is, is another step in, our, in the right direction. And another excellent performance from Richie Gordon. I think he had 32 and 14. Yeah, he's a little bit disappointed about the way he played in the first leg. So he certainly came out here with a, a man on a mission and uh, played a tremendous game for us. And perhaps if you'd made a few more of those three-point shots, you might have made a bit more of a run at it. Yeah, perhaps. But, uh, you know, that's all done now. You know, so we're, we're delighted with the progress we're making as a club. Um, and, uh, you know, who knows, maybe next year we'll get to a final. And start of the third quarter, did you think, oh, we might have a little run at it here? Yeah, I think we, you know, we got eight points up, and we had a, two or three chances to try and go ten up, and you know, missed a couple of layups down, you know, with the, down the stretch there, which I'd, you know, expect us to make. Um, so we made it tough on ourselves, but uh, all told, you know, we're going home with a win under our belt, uh, you know, so you know, we can't be too disappointed. Thanks for talking to us, Paul. Cheers. Thank you. Well, Gavin, through to the uh, cup final, you must be delighted. I am delighted. Uh, that was definitely a goal of ours this season, and uh, to get in the BBL Cup is, is great for us. I'm really, I'm really pleased, honestly. Yeah. And really, the job was done in the first leg. I think today we didn't we didn't play that great. I don't think Worcester played particularly well either. It was it was a kind of a it wasn't a great game, but we got the job done. I think a lot of the guys expended a lot of energy last night, and um, today we just did what we could. A tremendous performance from Ojo with all those shots, and Colbert hit some big ones as well too. Yeah, I think in recent weeks we really haven't been shooting the ball particularly well, and I've got good shooters on my team. And uh, over the weekend they've really started knocking them down, so I'm really pleased with them. And uh, are you a little bit disappointed not to have won this leg, or does it not matter? It, I mean, ultimately, it doesn't really matter, but at the same time, I would have liked to have won for the fans that, you know, have attended this game. And uh, if it was a little bit strange, I'm really pleased, but at the same time, I lost the game. But no, at the end of the day, it's over two legs, so uh, to have a BBL Cup final is, is, is fantastic. I'm, I'm pleased with the guys, I'm pleased with the club and the city. And a chance to erase the memories of that last Cup final as well. Yeah, that was a while ago now, but um, I'm really happy. I'm really happy that we're playing Newcastle. I think um, we had a really tough game on the road a couple of weeks ago, but if you're going to win a trophy, you want to beat the, uh, the best at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. And looking forward to that game, where do you think the, the key battles will be? Uh, all over the place. I mean, Newcastle, we've got such great players and we've got a, a team full of talent. And uh, on any day, any of those guys can be the, 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 the game winner. Well, through to the cup final, you must be delighted. Yeah, absolutely over the moon. Um, you know, that's, that was our goal at the beginning of the season, as we set out to do. And, uh, you know, it was, it was real scrappy. You know, even last night, even though we won by a substantial amount, it was a very, very scrappy, very well tough game. And today, it was the same same kind of thing. You know, it was a bit of a bit of choppy plays in there, you know, a bit of heated, uh, heated exchanges. But, um, you know, and luckily, luckily we came out on top. How hard is it to come into a game with the 28 point cushion and still play at the top level? It's really strange, Dan. Like you'd think it'd be easy because you know you have that, you know, the confidence of the, the night before, and you think you'd be you'd be okay. But um, we knew that we knew they were going to come out, and we knew you know how good as shooters they can be. One through four can shoot the ball really, really well, and uh, you know even Gordon inside's got a nice touch. So we knew they could rack up points. So you know we we had we had our caution signs. I know you know we knew we knew it could be tough. And local boy playing for your hometown team, you know what it means to the fans to get to a cup final. Yes, I do. Yeah, I, uh, as a kid, you know, I didn't see too many cup finals here. I'm in the BBL, so I'm really, really excited. And uh, I get to do it wearing a jersey instead of watching it. And I uh, can't wait. Absolutely can't wait. And uh, Newcastle in the final, they're the, the marquee team, if you like, the, the big boys to knock off. Yes, they are, yeah. You know, they, they've, they've got their name, you know, reputation throughout the, the last decade or so. And it's going to be north first south, you know. And, uh, you know, we're really, really excited. Really excited. Well done in getting through. Thanks a lot for talking to us. Cheers. Bye bye. Before we go, let's have a look at this week's results in the BBL. In the Championship, Newcastle maintained their undefeated start to the season with a 94-80 victory at Mersey, whilst Demarius Bowles had 37 as the Lions came from behind to beat the Wildcats. 
A disappointing weekend was completed for Durham on Saturday with a 97-64 defeat at Leicester as riders remain undefeated at home. On Sunday, Milton Keynes made it two wins from two over the weekend, another big night for Bolds as the Lions won in Cheshire. Whilst the Rocks had 32 from Michael Green as they held off Guildford Heat 99-94. In the championship table, Newcastle are four points clear of Worcester and Glasgow, whilst Leicester guaranteed themselves their best ever record at Christmas. Plymouth have games in hand down in sixth, but the rest of those sides are pretty tight. Great victory for the Wolves, but it wasn't enough in the end. The Raiders are through to the Cup Final. Our coverage continues next week when we'll be back at the Pavilions to see the Raiders taking on the Glasgow Rocks. That's Plymouth Raiders versus Glasgow Rocks, Tuesday, 20th of December, Sky Sports 3 at 8 p.m. Hope you enjoyed tonight's action. Goodbye. long hard innings but surely the end's in sight a steady approach Ooh, seems to be a bit of confusion well he's deep in the crease there but it looks like it's paid off that calls for a Carlsberg Carlsberg and Sky Sports your weeknight reward how it's possible that Jake got a freshly made six-inch sub and a drink for just three pounds. A sub and a drink for just three pounds? All day. Apparently so. How is this possible? Curious. And they say there are eight to choose from. Incredible. I just can't make this value add up. The Subway three-pound lunch deal. Genius. Fragrances by Paco Rabanne. You owe a lot of money to some bad people. I have a solution. A race from San Francisco to New York. Winner gets 25 million. And if I lose? Then you're dead. Need for speed, the run. Sainsbury's counters are just the place for something special this Christmas. Like making your own cheese board. And you can get any five specially selected cheeses for just a tenner. All right, what are you doing? <laughs> Sainsbury's, bringing you all of the ingredients for a show-stopping Christmas. I'm Charlie Luxton, and this is the Great Treehouse Challenge. 
Charlie Luxton is bringing local communities together to build the treehouse. This is your treehouse. Please open your eyes. They've all dreamt of. Amazing.